Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Fit Chicks Chat. My name is Laura Jackson, and today I am not rolling solo, but I am rolling without Amanda with the amazing Una Duncan. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so pumped to have you. So today we're talking all about fitness business. So how mm -hmm. you essentially built your business, Fit Feels Good, what what that kind of entailed, and just kind of giving people behind the scenes for all those out there who are looking to, to launch or grow their fitness business, what it's really like. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Okay, so I'd love to just start off, so just telling us your story and how you got into fitness, because I know for you, this wasn't your initial, business wasn't your thing, you were in acting. Yeah, totally. I was an actor. And then after that, I was a playwright. And so I was working as a documentary playwright. And I was sort of getting, I was sort of into fitness. And I was a fitness instructor. And then I learned very quickly. And I thought that would be a great way to get paid to stay in shape, which it was. It was cool. For but sure. then I realized very quickly that if you want to make any money, you need to be a trainer. So then I became a personal trainer. And then almost immediately after I got my certification, I got hired by a boot camp company. And that was back in the day when boot camps was just like wild. Like I would tell people, I was like, no, 6 a.m. in a park. And people would be like, what? Really? So <laughs> totally. But it was an awesome thing for first being a trainer because they gave me my workouts mm -hmm. and they gave me, I think it was like, you know, uh, six class or seven, cl nine classes a week. It was like three in the morning, three at night, whatever. It was great. And so it was enough that like, given that I was living cheap, it was enough to float me. And yeah. so I could work at 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. and I'd have all day to write my plays. So it worked awesome. And it was really great. And then I, I remember, and I was, you know, busting my butt, writing the plays and submitting for grants and it was going okay, but it's a hustle. Yeah. And I just remember I had this epiphany of being like, wait a second, I'm having more fun with that fitness stuff than I am with my, my big playwriting, which I had done like my master's in. It was like my big dream. And here I am. I'm like, seriously, I like the like swinging, jumping jacks and kettlebells and climbing on the fitness. <laughs> like, no, oh, yeah, I do. I'm really liking that. I, so could that totally, um, I could totally relate to that. That's kind of how mine started too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much like business, like I was totally into marketing, corporate marketing. That was my jam. And uh, yeah, started fitness on the side. And then next thing you know, I was like sitting in a stuffy boardroom, running around outside right. the park, having fun yeah. and working out. I was like, hmm. <laughs> right. Like what, what, how do I want to spend my life? Yeah. And uh, so that was... So yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to kind of go for the fitness stuff. And then, and then when I decided, okay, this is going to be my full-time thing, let's, let's start to build a career. Then I became um, a pro trainer. So I started training trainers, which was a great way to fill the days and, you know, make some income when I wasn't training people and started doing in-home training, stuff like that. And then I got pregnant and I thought, okay, I'm going to retire from actually training people. And uh, I'm just going to train trainers from now on, like move to sort of the academic part of this. Yeah. And then, but shortly after I had my baby, one of the companies that I used to work for really peed off all of their clients by a little shift in pricing and class structure. Mm -hmm. And all their members were pissed and they all threatened to leave en masse. And so one of them contacted me who had been in retirement and said, will you train us? And I was like, no, that's unethical. I'm not going to, you know, screw over my former employers. And I called my former employers and was like, listen, you got people pissed off. You better make amends. Like they're really pissed and they're asking me to do this. And they, I don't know, the situation did not resolve. And then I kind of phoned them and I said, well, I might take up this opportunity. And they were like, go for it. You have our blessing. Wow. I know. So I ended up getting this like prepackaged, boom, boot camp on my life. And I was like, well, I guess I'm coming out of retirement. And so, um, yeah, so that's how my first camp started. And, and then, sorry to interrupt. how long yeah. ago was that? So my son is seven now. So yeah, we started, oh, actually I just had my five year anniversary. So that must've been after my second child. So it was, yeah, five years ago. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then we were, so, it was a great camp. It was so tight. And then what happened is people started moving to different parts of the city and they were gutted that they couldn't stay with the camp. So then they said, oh, but I know a few other people in my new area. Would you start another one there? So then that's how my other location started. They were all from that original group. Oh, awesome. And they sort of took the initiative to start their own little camp. So that's how my other locations grew. And then from there, um, I kind of had this thought, oh, maybe I'll try that. It was literally, it was, I was feeling a little fluffy after the holidays one year. And I, <laughs> and so I thought, let's try eating super healthy. Like I thought I ate healthy, but I was like, let's try this program and see if it works. And got 15 of my clients to try it with me. And we did. It was amazing. 
And then I was like, all right, well, let's add workouts to this and let's add a vegetarian version and blah, blah, blah. And then that was the seed of my 28 day transformation challenge, which is my online program, which is completely exploded. So that's how it all started. And then how long ago was the online program? So that's been three years now. Wow. Like I just find it crazy too, because we both, for anyone who's listening to this, we both live in Toronto. Yeah. So we have kind of crossed paths throughout the years and I've always been watching what you're doing because I always have loved it. And I find, I don't know about you, but I find in Toronto, like a lot of, there's, my experience has not been it being like cutthroat, a lot of competition. I think there's a lot of kind of respect for, Mm -hmm. especially people who are able to carry on a business like over at least a year. You know, you see a lot of people, these boot camps pop up or companies and then they're gone. I mean, you've been doing this for over five years. I've been doing this for in September will be 10 years, which is yeah. insane. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I've just always loved watching you, what you're doing. And I mean, we've worked together on some projects, which I absolutely love. Totally. Yeah. Um, but I've loved seeing that shift for you from going from like in person to online as well. And yeah. you're kind of doing both. And I know we were chatting a little bit before this, like, where are you kind of at with that? Like, are you loving the online more? Are you still loving the in-person? So here's the thing. I love in person so much. And I yeah. really think that, you know, being live and being with people is sort of, uh, I mean, the impact of that, there is nothing that can re- replace that. But um, I definitely, I would say my business right now, is sort of 80, moving to 90% online and the boot camps are becoming much smaller. And that's really just because I can scale so much better online. And sure. that even though the impact is maybe more powerful in person, it, the you know, scope of what I can do online is so much more. And there are a lot of sort of logistical problems. I mean, you and I were just talking about this, you know, staffing and locations yeah. and equipment and all that stuff is a total non-issue. Don't get me wrong. There's other issues online, but it's, um, yeah, it's, you can figure them out and outsource them way better online than you can you know, with in-person stuff. And that's one thing I love how you just said, you know, the, imp- we, I, I think we think the impact is so much more in person, but in all reality, I mean, there's so many people in places, like think about how many people you're touching for, with the transformation challenge who yeah. live in small towns who yeah. wouldn't have access to your level of training if there wasn't the online, online totally. option, right? Totally. So that's something I always tell like my students in Fitchix Academy too. And like, don't think just because you're not doing it in person that you know what I mean? That your impact is actually any less because you're almost doing a disservice to a lot of people if you don't give the online option because they need your help, right? Like yeah. people all over the world. And we live in a city where there's a lot of really great, you know, you could do anything from spinning to boot camp to yoga to aerial yeah. yoga. Yeah, but yeah. If you're living in smaller places, it's like you don't have that access. So I always think as a fitness professional, you know, sometimes we forget that and there's so much opportunity online still. Like, well, I shouldn't say still, it's opening up to be so much more. Well, it's massive. And you can, op- and because of the scale, you can offer it at a fraction of the price. Exactly. So there are people who have access to me that would never be able to pay for, you know, even my boot camps and never mind one-on-one stuff. So it really, you know, so you're, you really can spread your impact so much better. Yeah. And especially for people listening who don't, or watching this, you could either be watching this on YouTube or listening to this. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that you're one of Canada's top fitness professionals. Like you have won multiple awards as top pro trainer, top fitness professional. Like, so for people to be able to work with you one-on-one, which you don't even do anymore, right? Yeah. Like, that would be really expensive for them. So it's yeah. awesome that you're giving that option and that opportunity. Totally. Totally. It's awesome. The online stuff has been explosive and amazing. Yeah, I definitely, I, I love it too. Cause even for me as well with like, I don't teach boot camps anymore just because I still would, I still love teaching. But for me again, too, it's, it's a time thing and I'm focused so much more on the Academy, but we still do the retreats. And that's one mm. thing that, you know, when I have a weekend and I'm like face to face with women, I'm totally. like, Oh, I just forgot this high. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I also forgot how many calories you burn during your work hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I'm like, my Fitbit right now is about to tell me to get up and go for a walk. Totally. Yeah. Um, okay. So staying with that then. So this kind of podcast too, I want to think about it in the way of, if someone's listening, who's like, okay, I want to, oh, I want to start my own fitness business or I'm already in it. And I'm kind of like, just have a couple clients. What the heck am I doing? I'd love to hear for you. Like what has been one of your biggest challenges with opening your own business? And that could be online or in person. Yeah, I would say, well, definitely in person, um, staffing Mm -hmm. has been one of the biggest challenges, but that's when you kind of get to a bigger spot. What I would say is right off the bat, one of the most terrifying things was the inconsistency of revenue. So honestly, like, I don't know about you, Laura, but it took me, 
I don't know how many years to not freak out every August. Like every August I was like getting my resume ready and thinking like, it's never going to, they're never going to come back. You know, yeah, and that's one thing. Sorry for people listening. If you're teaching fitness, August is like the slowest month of all time. Just go on vacation. Yeah. Just don't yeah. even, yeah. it's almost not work. Like work double time during the busy time for us, which was always, I found was like March to May was like our busiest. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. September is a little, little nice. Yeah, I found for us September was always a little weird because moms and going back to school and stuff. So it was right. almost like you're kind Flip of focused back in. Yeah. Right. But yeah, I totally agree with you. Sorry to interrupt. I totally agree with you about wow. that. Like come August, you're, I used to be like, okay, what is happening? Am I suddenly going to go into business? Like, <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely one of the biggest challenges. So what I would say to new people is just breathe. It's cool. They'll come back. It's just, but plan for the cycles. So don't go buy yourself a Ferrari in March. Yeah. <laughs> bank it. Bank it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. So that's yeah. your one for in-person. What would be your one online? So online for, and the question is a uh, biggest challenge yeah. for online tech, tech, Ugh. Facebook ads, like all that stuff. And uh, to all you beginners outsource it, spend your first dollars on getting someone else to do that. And that is the best investment you can make. I know you feel like I don't have the money. No, man, if you don't have the money, you need, that's why you doubly need to get someone else to do that. And there are, you can do that affordably like Fiverr. There's lots of ways you can outsource this. Don't try and figure out the tech on your own. Be the uh, trainer. Yeah. I love that because again, I fall victim to that too. Like I'm someone as well. I like to, I almost, I need to really know it before I pass it off almost. Cause I feel like I can't wrap yeah. my head around things. Yeah, and I, I get that. so much time when it came to like Facebook ads trying to figure them out myself. And that is one thing I will never do again. I will never, never. do that again because it literally sucked a, all of my time and the life out of me. <laughs> it's a full-time job. Yeah. We've, yeah. Uh, we've outsourced, but like you said, there's great places like Fiverr. Um, just even asking around, I found like, I don't know, how did you find your, your online people you work with that turn? Cause you hear nightmare stories about, you know, you're hiring someone and they just take your money and they don't do the work. Yeah. Um, I go to a lot of uh, networking events for other online marketers and I am friends with them on Facebook and, you know, they, I, I contact them if I need someone or, you know, I see who they give shout outs to and then I'll contact them. Yeah. Know you're, you're always one of my go-tos. Like I've gotten my accountant from you. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've gotten my new bookkeeper from you. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. Like I always, that's the first thing I, do, I always ask around and I always yeah. recommend that too. It's just go with word of mouth. Sure. Um, also, what was the other one though? Upwork is great too, I find. But again, it's kind of like, Try to find you don't know. It's it's always better if it comes from someone you know. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so that's your biggest challenge. Let's also talk about mistakes. Because I, I think a lot of times when you hear people talking about their business, they're telling you all this, oh my god, I grew this oh, yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I talked to this professional in Canada. Da, da, da. Yeah, yeah. So there is a lot of bumps and you know twists and turns along the way. So what would be something that for you would be your biggest mistake? Okay, so biggest mistake would be not building systems. I am regretting this every single day. And I know this seems like when you're first starting, you're like, what systems? Like that doesn't make sense. So when I see systems, I mean like when a new person starts boot camp, what are the exact stages they need to go through in order to make sure they're in the right place at the right time? They know what equipment, blah, blah, blah. Like they, you know, all the, or when somebody cancels, like what are the steps? And because yeah. I was just doing that on my own one by one, I didn't think to actually write down what that process is. And so yeah. So what you want is to write all that stuff down, even though it seems ridiculous that you can pass it on to someone else and then you can focus on growing your business. Otherwise you're going to spend your time writing that same email over and over again, which is dumb. So I wish I had spent more time on systems. Totally. I, I love that advice. I love that advice. Yeah. Um, okay. So then staying with that, I, I want to know then what would you say? We talked about some challenges, some mistakes. Mm -hmm. What would be your biggest accomplishment? Like what is something you're like, yes, I totally killed it with this. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So my biggest accomplishment uh, professionally would be the communities that have created. So I am so proud of the vibe we have in our communities and the people that I've managed to attract awesome. and the found the relationship. So like, for example, one of my boot campers got hit by a car on the way home from class once. It was oh my God. A horrendous thing. And I, um, was there for it. And I mentioned when I was telling the other people in the class that her new 
winter coat got cut off of her. And so what did they do? On their own initiative, they took up a collection to buy her a new winter coat. Oh, I love right? that. Yeah, in my online community, we've had, you know, births, we've had deaths, we've had, you know, just seeing like the shy guy with the beer gut come out of the woodwork. And then the, yeah. the girl who was always kind of plush size being like a fitness leader telling everybody else like, get your butt to a Zumba class or whatever. Like that, uh, all of that just makes my heart sing so much. So professionally, I would say those communities, I'm so proud of. Personally, my biggest accomplishment is having my husband quit his job to come and work for my company. Which we were and, just talking about, which I think is just absolutely amazing. A, thank so you. you guys can actually like keep your relationship going and <laughs> work together and still have a relationship. Like, yeah, blows my mind. <laughs> and it's been better for our relationship because he's so aware of, um, you know, what what my mission is like he he is so mm -hmm. he's like this is really good for people which is just so cute you know he comes from like yeah. a mechanical engineering background he, he was like whatever she's doing that fitness stuff but now he's like this is important which is just, uh, it's so touching and the freedom that it's afforded our family because now we're location independent you know i don't know if you can see i'm at my, my cottage right now which yeah. is pretty rad like it's pretty great to be here and my kids are down there and they're making trains and so all of that sort of location freedom is in incredible and that's what, like, sharing this, I think is so important because for someone watching this, right, who's just starting in this industry, it feels like all those things are completely unattainable. Yeah, I you know? know. And that's why we want to do this podcast because both you and I are living proof it's possible. Yeah. You know, you just need to learn how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just avoid, do it. Yeah. yeah. And, and avoid some of the mistakes, hopefully, that we've made along the way. But even them, I always say, like, the mistakes have been the best lessons, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Yep. And you meet the most amazing people. 100%. So that's I that's, and I love also too, because I'm also a huge feminist, just even, you know, how you're redefining gender roles, even in your own house for your two sons. Like, I think that's yeah. so cool <laughs> yeah. that you guys are, yeah, you're creating though a new, a new norm that I think we're seeing a lot of more now. Like, I also know a lot of women who are now, you know, the primary breadwinners and their husbands are staying at home while they pursue their dreams. So I think it's super it's very cool. I love it. Very cool. Okay. So then what is your goal? Like with, with your business? So it's been now five years and you're just, you know, you're taking off online and what's your goal? Like, what do you want to, what do you want to achieve within the next, let's, let's say five years? Yeah. So, um, my goal is to sort of, to grow the Fit Feels Good movement more internationally. Uh, we are expanding internationally, but I want to focus on that a little bit more and to grow this, like after having worked with hundreds and hundreds of people. I feel like I'm finally getting clarity on what is my method and the things that I think are so important for yeah. people to really achieve their most awesome life. And what uh, you know, advice I would say to new people is, don't think you have to have all that figured out. Like, you know, figuring out like your about me page, like people get stuck on their about me page. I'm like, dude, just teach, teach yeah. and then you'll figure it out. And you'll realize like your people will tell you what's working, what's not. And you're going to adapt to that. And that's going to be your new method. So, you know, after doing this for so long and so many people, now I'm like, oh, I know what I want to shout on the mountaintops. Mm -hmm. So now that I've got that, I'm like, I got, a, I got stuff to share. I want more people to know about that it's about feeling good physically, mentally, emotionally. And then when you've got that, then the impact in your life in every area can be so amazingly transformative. It's so true. Because what we do, I, I feel our industry is kind of, really underappreciated because you know you got the side where it's really like aesthetics right like yeah yeah but all the people who are online and they're they're trainers but their whole method of getting clients is like showing their six-pack abs and talking about weight loss and all that yep and that will always be there but i also find that that like that kind of sometimes gives us a bad rap right like a lot of people think oh if you're a fitness trainer you're you're vain or you just care about looks but when in all reality i always say what the field i think we work in is preventative health like for, because we're essentially if you can teach someone how to move their bodies and eat properly and you know fall in love with that and make that a lifestyle you have given them the tools to essentially like avoid oh 90 percent of illnesses out there and i think we need to take more you know kudos for what we do and i feel like we need to be appreciated a little bit <laughs> it's true that's interesting that's why I'm, like, I'm giving the love out to you guys like to all my my fellow sisters and brothers in the field because it's like yeah you're no, it's making, important. Yeah. What you do, important. you're changing people, you're saving people's lives, you know, yeah. like, so, and it takes a lot. It takes a special person to, to, to motivate someone. And that's why I've always loved what you do. Cause you do it in such a fun, accessible, like yeah. everything is just, 
it, it literally is like fit feels good. Like you were like, yeah, this is fun. Like I feel it's got to feel good. Totally. Yeah, and it's, totally. it's approachable and it's non-judgmental and you have all different walks of life in your programs, which I just think is like, it's so cool. Thank and you. You're making, you're doing good stuff. I like Thanks, it. Thanks, man. Thank I you. Love that. Thank you. Okay, so, I'm just going to warn you, I've got 14% battery. Yeah, no yeah. worries. Well, yeah. I'm actually going to ask you our last question right now. Oh, okay, okay. So if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice. So you know that question when you're like, if I can go back and tell my 13-year-old self, but if you could tell your Una for starting a business self, what would be your uh, some advice about opening a business that you wish you would have known then? What would it be? Okay. Um, we're going deep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you know what? One of them is kind of just what you were just saying. Like, I don't know, those of you listening, watching, maybe you don't know or you haven't gleaned, but like Laura and I live in the same city and we have like basically the same business. Yeah. So my, one of my biggest pieces of advice would be like, there really is no competition. Yeah. Find your, your competitors and make them your best friends. Like Laura is freaking awesome. Like Laura is one of the few people in the world who <laughs> will know what I'm talking about when I, you know, freak out about all the things I freak out about. Yeah. I and, need you um, for my therapy. <laughs> exactly. Right. We need each other. And you know, she's like, I got your accountant. I got, because they know it's, there are no competitors. Yeah. Don't be scared of people opening up a thing next to you or whatever. They're not competitors. Your people are going to love you. Don't worry about that. It's a total non-issue. That would be number one piece of advice or what I would give myself. Cause I used to be like, Oh my gosh, something's opening up in my whole thing. And like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. Or she's doing this. I'm, I'm not doing that. I should do this. Either. Yes. All that scrolling Instagram and being like, oh, no. all these people are, no, just don't, don't do it. <laughs> no, don't do it. Okay. So that's the first one. Second one is don't be afraid of selling. People are like, Oh, I feel mm-hmm. easy selling. I just want to help people. I'm like, no man, that is selfish. If you believe yes. you can transform people's lives and their bodies and save their life and all that stuff, like you owe it to them to sell what you can do. It's so important. So I feel now that selling is like my sacred duty. I know it's going to change their lives. I'm like, I feel like I'm trying to sell them, you know, a life changing medical, like it, they, I, they need to be there. And that's how passionate I am about my programs and selling it. So I am not scared to sell. I oh, look I forward that. to that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Amanda and I actually, we just filmed, um, we did, we were filming a bunch of content and we just filmed something about like getting, like getting comfortable with being uncomfortable and the whole idea of selling. Cause that used to be me. I, Amanda always was like, yeah, I love selling. She used to work in sales. And for me, I'm, nice. like, I'm not a salesperson, Yeah. but that was a big lesson for me too, is flipping that script and, yeah. and thinking about it in a way that felt good for me. Right. Yeah. Me, I always thought of like the sleazy car salesman, but then no. you're like, no, this isn't like, I have something that can really transform people's lives. I yeah. Have you have awesome. to sell for sure. I yeah, love absolutely. So those would be my biggest bits of advice. Well, those are amazing little nuggets. <laughs> All the stuff we talked about today though, like I just hope for anyone listening that this has given you some insight, some real insight to what it's like to, you know, start a business and the challenges, mistakes, you know, the accomplishments, they all are part of it. Totally. Um, and I just love that you've been able to be so transparent with yours. Cause I just think the more that we share what it's really like, the easier it becomes for our whole industry to keep growing and changing and doing more for themselves. So absolutely. Yeah. So for yeah. anyone who wants more info on you, I know. Uh, so for anyone listening or watching this, all links to Una stuff is going to be on our blog. Um, but just right now, where can someone get more information on your online transformation challenge or you? Thank you. Yeah. It's all at fitfeelsgood.com. Awesome. And that's where they can get sign up for stuff. And yeah. Like, sign up for all of it. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it is awesome. You guys should all do it. Um, and then of course for this podcast, if you guys want more, any, more information on any of our upcoming programs, if you're interested in getting certified, we have our fitness and nutrition expert program coming up where we do a business section, which is on September the 26th as well as our Holistic Nutrition Weight Loss Expert Program. And that is all um, at fitchicksacademy.com. And I'm a teacher on one of those, aren't yes. I? Yes. Yes. You teach anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much. This has been thank so you. awesome. And I will definitely be talking to you again very soon. <laughs> Therapy. <laughs> exactly. Over <laughs> cocktails next time. <laughs> That's right. Sounds good. Okay. All right, ladies. Thank you for the interview. Bye. Bye.